This topic we're looking at is all about polynomials. Now, what is polynomials? Well, polynomials are talking about the study of when we of expressions or mathematical expressions that have multiple terms. You'll see here that the word poly up in the uh, the name here that of course means many. And their phrase nomials out here. It's in polynomials. This is referring to terms. So for example, you may have heard the term binomial somewhere. If you're not, if you haven't heard of it, there's a term called binomial. And that was when you've got two terms. For instance, if you've got some bracket A plus B, that is a binomial and a trinomial would be three terms, tri being three. So that would be if I had A squared plus B plus B squared or something along those lines. So what's the point of calling polynomials? I've not referred to any other nomials so far. Well, this is a large umbrella term to cover everything to do with cubics, which is uh, uh, expressions that have the, uh, where the X term, the highest powered X term is to the power of three. Or alternatively for quartics, where the highest powered term is four. As a start to looking at the language of polynomials, uh, we want to be able to use or read a polynomial be able to do substitutions accordingly and also to uh, carry out any instructions that we need. So for example, you might see this uh, uh, sort of expression here. We've got P of X is equal, and that's well how we read it, P of X is equal to X cubed plus 4X squared minus 2X plus 6. The P is just indicating the name of this polynomial. So, uh, in our previous chapter, we've been looking at f of x, and f being the name of a function. Uh, p is just the name of a polynomial. Now we need to find each of these other little friends. So, for example, I've been asked to, uh, been asked to find uh, p of 1. So what does that mean? This is actually a set of instructions. This is, means that I need to replace here. So I need to replace... The letter X with the number 1. That's what that means. So every time I see the letter X, uh, I need to replace it with the number 1. So we're going to go and write in. We're going to answer uh, B here. So this is P of 1. So this is going to be a 1 cubed plus 4 times 1 squared minus 2 to the bracket 1 there, plus 6. You'll notice there that I'm putting little brackets in there. I don't know about you, but I tend to go and stuff things up if I don't put little brackets, uh, particularly if there's negatives involved. Uh, but I would hate for you to think that uh, one of the answers was supposed to be 21 or something like that. Uh, no, we'll put lovely brackets. It's remember, if you've got a number next to a set of brackets, that's a multiplication there. So 1 cubed is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4. Remember, we always do our brackets first as according to our rules of bod mass. Uh, negative 2 times 1, so that's going to be negative 2, plus 6. So, well, that will go to us where we simplify that all together. It's 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 take away 2 is going to make that equal to 3. 3 plus 6 would be equal to 9. Well, let's have a look at C. Same process. Now, it would be a great uh, just challenge for yourself as a uh, developing and burgeoning mathematician to make sure that you can uh, adequately cube uh, or even up to, say, power of five small numbers. So as long as you know what uh, two cubed is or two to the power of four or two to the power of five even, that will help put you in great stead rather than you having to constantly calculate these things. Two cubed often comes up a lot when we have to deal with anything with polynomials or often end up having to substitute that number in. So we're going to do two cubed plus four times two squared minus two times a two, put that in brackets there, plus six. So that's going to go and get us equal to eight plus 16 minus 4 plus 6 and that's going to be equal to 20 plus 6 which gets me to 26. There we go. Uh, let's get a different colour out here. Uh, now for the negative ones, uh, this is a delightful bit of trapping going on here. This is why I highly recommend making sure that you've got your brackets in here because it is very easy to stuff up negatives. And we're going to have 
Again, I'm just substituting, uh, that's the term for replacing, substituting, um, a little negative ones in here. So negative one cubed is not positive one. That will, of course, be negative one squared. So this is going to be negative one. And negative one squared is positive one. Positive one times four is positive four. Negative two times negative one makes it a great old positive two and plus six. And then so what we're going to have end up there is negative one plus four. It's going to make that equal to three because it's the same as four take away one. Three plus two is going to make that five. Five plus six make that 11. In this old friend here, this P of A, what that means is I have to replace every letter X with letter A. Well, that's rather simple, isn't it? I'm just changing a letter for another letter. So we're going to go and put the letter A here. We're going to have A cubed plus 4A squared minus 2A plus 6. If I could factorise it, as in make put in lovely brackets, I would. Fortunately, this friend doesn't factorise very nicely, so we can just leave that answer as is. Now, this is the real meat of why we need to be able to do this. Often you'll be uh, given a problem where one of the lovely coefficients is missing. Now, what's a coefficient again? Well, that's uh, if I zoom in here. Watch out, it doesn't hit you in the face there. That little friend there, that 5, in fact, that positive 5, I should say, that is a coefficient. It's whatever number is in front of the letter. Uh, if I remember my Latin correctly, coefficient, of course, meaning uh, co, meaning to be together, and efficient in this particular circumstance means to work together. So the idea of a coefficient is a number that is working with a letter, which we call a pronumeral in the business, and they are working together to solve something. So that is a coefficient. So let's, we've got here, so we let P, we are letting P of X is equal to X cubed plus 5X squared minus AX minus 20. Now, if P of 2 is equal to 0, find the value of A. So we're going to go and um, solve for this letter A. We want to know what number that is. Now, I have been told that if I replace all of the X's with 2, remember the, the little bracket here, since we're dealing with X's here, we're replacing just the X's. If I replace all the X's with 2, apparently the answer is going to be equal to 0. So we can use this to our advantage. So I'm going to go with A here, and we're going to go P of 2 is equal to 2 cubed plus 5 times 2 squared minus A times 2 minus 20. And we're saying that that is equal to 0, according to our bit of information there. So this becomes 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, plus uh, times positive 5 is going to make that uh, 20, minus 2A minus 20 equals 0. It's always recommended to take some time to make sure that you don't stuff this up at all. Um, I would, I would hide, it, usually these sorts of things, it's the basic arithmetic that all students get wrong. So uh, I would suggest for the early stages, making sure you have a lovely little calculator just to make sure that you uh, can check your answers as we go. But thankfully, we've got some things that easily knock out. Uh, we've got this plus 20 and this minus 20. 20 take away 20 is going to be zero, so it's going to leave us at 8 minus 2a equals zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plus 2a on both sides, and I'm going to get 8 is equal to 2a. Then I can divide both sides by 2, and I get myself a lovely bit of 4 is equal to a. So we found the value of a. Go us. The next one, part B here, is very much a similar, a very similar example. Um, the only thing is that it's got threes and 68s involved. So we're, we're going to do the same strategy. It is saying here that if I replace all the x's with a 3, uh, the final answer will equal to a 68. So that's what I'm going to do. So for part B, uh, if you're anything like me, you'll end up, when you do lots and lots of these, you'll accidentally mix up which question you're doing. So make sure that we're dealing with this equation here, this 2x cubed plus ax squared minus 5x minus 7, and not the top one there. So I'm going to go 2, 3 cubed plus a3 squared minus 5 times uh, a3 here. That's what we want here. Make sure my brain isn't melting. Minus 7 is equal to 68. 
3 cubed, oh, well, that's a bit of a challenging one. 3 times 3 times 3 is, of course, 27. 27 times 2, uh, click, 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 click. That's going to be 54. 54 plus 9a minus 15 minus 7 is equal to 68. So we can tidy up all of these lovely friends. We get 54. Take away, uh, so we take away 22 plus 9a is equal to 68. And I might just change these to little arrows because we don't like to have two lots of equal signs going on here. Uh, so this is going to be 54 take away 22. We're going to make that a 32 plus 9a is equal to 68. And we've got 9a is equal to, well, we'll need to go and subtract uh, 32 from both sides here. And we got 9a is equal to 36 and a is equal to 4. How did I get that? I divided both sides. By nine. Now, this next one is a bit of a doozy here. We've been told now we have to find two letters. So, this uh, whenever we have to find multiple letters and we haven't been given a neat trick, we're going to have to do simultaneous equations. What that means, of course, is that we're going to have to set up two equations and we're going to have to solve them accordingly, either by adding or subtracting or substituting. So, if we're not sure how to do that, let's at least get the first bits right. The bit that we have just done, let's do some substituting. We've been told that if the equation for this particular polynomial, for part D, if it we replace all the letter X's with a negative 1, the, that will be the same as if I replace all the uh, X's with, an, uh, with a 2, and they will both equal 0. So let's sort one thing at a time, shall we? Because this often confuses people when we've got lots of equal signs here. So I know that if I replace all the x's with a negative 1, that's going to be equal to a 0. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly so I can copy that top there. So for example d, I'm going to go and replace all of the x's with a negative 1. 3 times negative 1 to the power of 6 minus 5 negative 1 cubed plus a to the negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus 10. Hopefully you'll know that whenever you multiply or do uh, a 1 to the power of an even number, it's end up going to be uh, a positive number. So negative 1 to the power of 6 is going to make that a lovely positive 3, because uh, 3 times negative 1 to the power of 6 is 3 times 1. Uh, and then we've got here uh, negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is going to make that a big old positive 5. And it's going to become uh, plus a minus b plus 10. Uh, oh, yes, and I have been told this will equal 0. So I'll make that equal to 0. Let's put my little arrows in there. Let's put an arrow in here. We'll just tidy this up. We'll get all the like terms together. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 10 makes it 18 plus a minus b is equal to 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plop that 18 over onto the other side. And I'm going to go and get a minus b is equal to negative 18. Now this is going to be my first equation. So I know that if I the a take away b is going to be equal to negative 18. So now what I need to do is I need to go and find out what else they could possibly equal to so that I can solve accordingly. So I'm going to use the other bit of information here, which was uh, if I replace all the x's with a 2, that's going to get me the answer of 0. So we shall do that. I uh, might uh, furnish ourselves with a different colour so we know what we're doing here. So 2, and that's going to be 3, 2 to the power of 6. I hope you are very good with your 2 to the power of 6s, plus a times 2 squared, plus b times 2. It's equal to zero. Why do I know it's equal to zero? Because that's what the information says up here. That if I replace that uh, all the x's with a two, then that's going to be equal to a zero. So here we go. Now two to the power of six. Now two to the power of uh, five. I know is thirty-two. So therefore two to the power of six is going to be equal to uh, thirty-two times two, which is sixty-four. Um, and now sixty-four times three. Uh, that should be equal to one hundred and ninety-two. Uh, two, to, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and times 5, that's going to make that 40, and then we've got 4a uh, plus 2b plus 10, 
Uh, please be aware that's my B, not a 6. That's a B uh, equals 0. And so we can tidy this up. 192, take away 40. Uh, plus 10 is going to make that 162. Plus 4A plus 2B is equal to 0. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to subtract on both sides the 162. And I get here 4A plus 2B is equal to negative 162. Now, I could just leave that and make that the lovely equation, although I do have an opportunity to simplify it even further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of those numbers by a common factor. And hopefully you might notice that a common factor, the number that can fit inside each of these, would be 2. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. This gets me 2a plus b is equal to negative 81. That's going to be my equation 2. Now, you don't have to, of course. You don't have to simplify that further. It will still work uh, doing simultaneous equations without. But hopefully you might see why I've bothered to do so. Now, I've set up two equations where a minus b is equal to negative 18. And I also know that 2a plus b is equal to negative 81. So in order to go and uh, solve, I need to go and eliminate one letter at a time. I can only find uh, the letters by deal, or the pronumeral values by doing one thing at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add equation 1 and add equation 2 together. So I'm going to get a minus b is equal to negative 18. 2a plus b is equal to negative 81. So why am I adding these lovelies together? Well, hopefully when I do this, one of those lovely letters will simply disappear and I'll be able to solve for one letter. So a plus two a's, if I've got an a and I'm gonna add two more a's, it gives me three a's. Negative b plus b, well, if I have minus a number and I add the exact same number, it's gonna make that zero. Aha, so my b's have gone. Um, negative 18 uh, plus negative 81, well, a plus and a mi uh, minus will make a minus, so that's going to make that negative 99. And then if I divide both of these lovelies here by 3, I can tell you now that A is equal to negative 33. So, I know what the letter A is equal to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the, I'm going to find out what B is equal to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a is equal to negative 33. In this instance, I'm going to substitute it into equation 2 to solve for b. So negative, so 2 times negative 33 plus b is equal to negative 81. Negative 66 plus b is equal to negative 81. I'm going to add 66 on both sides. Why am I adding it? Because I need to do the opposite of whatever it says here. So this is minus 66. So in order to get rid of it onto the other side, I've got to add 66. And then what I'm going to do is I get B is equal to negative 1 plus 66, which gets us into negative 15. So there's my lovely answers for those two.